Scientists use graphs and animations to visualize data, but did you ever wonder how scientists make them accessible to broad audiences? We talk with the NCAR scientist, Dr. Nihant Cherukuru, to learn more. We're here with Nihant from the Computational Information Systems Laboratory, or CISL, and can you tell us a little bit about what do you do in your lab? CISL provides state-of-the-art supercomputing, data services, and computational research to support atmospheric and related sciences. My work specifically focuses on the research into data visualizations. And does your team have a space where they work on this type of data visualization? Yes, we call it the Viz Lab. Is it possible to go and see it? Absolutely. Let's, Let's head down there. Thanks. So this is the Viz Lab, a collaborative space for our team, the Visualization Services and Research Group. So basically, we use this space to help scientists visualize complex data sets in high resolution. Can you tell us about why it's important to have inclusive data visualizations? Why should we care? Yeah, data visualizations, as the name suggests, uses a visual encoding of data. However, this predominant reliance on visual encoding can cause accessibility barriers for folks who do not use vision as their primary means to consume information. So with inclusive design principles, we use a multitude of solutions that work for the broadest possible audience. This is an example of one such data representation where we use touch as an alternate modality to examine data. So what you see over here is a 3D printed representation of the Northern Hemisphere on which you can place these cutouts which represent the sea ice extent. By overlaying the pieces, people are able to see the impact of climate change on Arctic sea ice using haptics, touch. And then you work with augmented reality as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's really exciting. If you look at computers and the way we interact with them today, we often use a computer screen, which is a two-dimensional surface. Now imagine a world in the future where we have the buildings, the walls, and the physical objects around you being a part of the interaction. In a way, uh, we can leverage this technology to make indoor spaces such as museums accessible to people who are blind and vision impaired. Poster 3. The source is us. Almost everything that we undertake is interdisciplinary. So what this means is that significant contributions can come from anyone and anywhere. 